Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us today for the elementary uh, school choice fair. Uh, today, you will have an opportunity to hear from uh, all of the uh, all of our elementary schools across three sessions. This, uh, each school will have a representative, a principal, assistant principal, uh, potentially uh, a teacher uh, as well, depending on how they would like to proceed. Uh, each school will have four minutes to talk about the wonderful work that happens in their buildings and in their classrooms uh, to help you make a uh, better informed decision as to uh, where to submit, uh, which school to select for the application uh, process. <clears throat> I also uh, bring to you greetings from uh, Superintendent Javier Montañez, Dr. Javier Montañez. Um, the superintendent, unfortunately, is unable to join us today, but he wanted to make sure that you all knew he uh, was saying hello to you and welcoming you to uh, Providence Public Schools. Again, my name is uh, Nick Figueroa, Chief of Family and Community Engagement. Uh, what I will do is walk you through uh, some of the steps here for today uh, and highlight uh, some of the schools that are available. Uh, please note that we have uh, several languages uh, for interpretation. If you look down at the bottom of your screen, uh, you will see a list of languages that you can select. Uh, we also have a Q&A button at the bottom of the screen as well. Uh, at any point, please feel free to enter your questions. Uh, we will uh, try to answer those questions along the way. And then we're uh, reserving about 10 minutes at the end uh, to give um, families an opportunity to ask questions uh, via that chat. Janet? Yes, um, I wanted to just add another slide right now, just really quick, Nick. Okay. So the families that are on our calls and you are planning to select another language. Again, as Nick indicated, please look at the very bottom of your screen and read this slide right here and it gives you the each instructions based on your language accessing the globe at the very bottom. Once you press it, you will choose the language you prefer and you will begin to listen to the interpreter for the entire duration of this presentation. Thank you. All right, thank you, Janet. So I will go back uh, to the screen I had up here. All right, thank you. So uh, moving into uh, the presentation uh, today, we will have, as I mentioned, uh, representatives from each school. Uh, we'll come and talk about uh, their institution. And then our, uh, our colleagues from uh, the registration office will talk about the process and the deadlines that are in place for families to apply for uh, elementary school. A reminder to all panelists, uh, as we have, uh, this is the first time that we have uh, interpretation beyond Spanish. So we actually have uh, six languages being interpreted. We ask that when you present, uh, that you speak slowly so that our interpreters can relay your information. So here, looking at the screen, we have uh, 21 elementary schools in Providence. Uh, if we look uh, here at the south side of Providence, we have uh, uh, Robert Bailey, uh, Mary Fogarty, uh, Sergeant Cornell Young in Charlotte Woods Elementary, Alan Sean Feinstein Elementary, which is at Broad, uh, Lillian Feinstein Elementary, which is at Sackett, uh, Reservoir Avenue, the Leventon uh, Dual Language Academy, and Charles uh, Fort's Alfred Lima Elementary. If we look at the northern part of the city, you will see uh, the schools that are located there and on the east side. So George J. West, Pleasant View, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Vesey Street, Harry Kazarian, Martin Luther King Jr. and Varn Gregorian. 
Now if we shift over to the west side of Providence, uh, you will see Asa Messer, Carl G. Lauro, Frank Spaziano, Webster Avenue, Anthony Carnavali, and William DeBate. So these schools are located on uh, the western side of uh, Providence. All right, uh, Lauro, Carl Lauro. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, can you hear me okay? Awesome. Uh, my name is Alice Broxfold. I am the literacy coach at Carl G. Loro Elementary School. Um, we're a diverse and welcoming K through five school on Federal Hill in Providence. We currently serve around 550 students. Um, our student body comes from all over the world and over half speak Spanish at home. We have uh, general education classrooms, we have integrated English as a second language classrooms, and we have inclusion classrooms. Um, our teachers are knowledgeable, uh, they're eager and enthusiastic to help students succeed, and several, uh, many actually are bilingual. We have a large resource staff to provide students with extra academic and social and emotional support where needed. Um, and we host regular family engagement nights. Your engagement is really important to us and we look forward to be partners with you in your child's education. And we're happy to answer any questions you have during the Q&A. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Calixto, do you have anything to add? Hello. Um, so um, as I was saying before, my name is on Pedro Calixto. I'm um, one of the assistant principals at Carji Laurel. We also have another assistant principal um, her name is Mary Bergeon, and our principal is Suzanne Madden. Um, our school, as the literacy coach Alice mentioned before, has um, we have grades K to fifth grade, and we do also have, um, we're considered the Laurel Lions, and we believe in um, um, following directions, being respectful. Um, we promise to be safe, and we promise to be ready, and we always promise to do our best. So we call ourselves the Laurel Lions. Um, we also have partnerships with, um, with City Year, where volunteers come into our school and they work with the third and fourth and fifth grade. We also have um, pa another partnership with Inspiring Mind volunteers as well. Um, we also have after school programs for the upper grades. Um, and we also started this year going back to um, having our basketball team. So we're very looking forward for that to happen. And for the incoming kindergarten students, we hope to see them also joining um, these activities later on as well. And I think that's it for now. We can move to uh, Spaziano. Yes, good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so good afternoon, um, parents. I'm aspiring principal and teacher at Spaziano Elementary School. My name is Dina Nunez. I'm excited to report that Spaziano is transitioning from greatness to becoming even greater. Imagine sending your child to a school to learn two languages simultaneously, Spanish and English, in an environment that promotes and supports bilingualism and biliteracy. It all started with the vision. When our annex first shut down, there were mixed feelings of melancholy and joy. The sadness felt was for the loss of the building that we once considered a second home where we spent countless hours inspiring minds to the joy in knowing eventually it would be replaced with new memories. So with the transition currently, our K class or kindergarten class is housed at Carl G. Loro, and then first through fifth grade is in our main building. In the not too distant future in the plans of 2023, the district will be constructing a new state-of-the-art building where we can continue to grow our vision of becoming 100% dual language school. Uh, so what does that mean? What does that look like? And what does that sound like? That means that if your child is dominant in either English or Spanish, he or she is a great candidate and would qualify for participation at our dual language um, classroom. The philosophy in dual language promotes bilingualism and biliteracy Dual language classrooms are taught by dedicated teachers, ideally who are bilingual themselves and native speakers of both English and Spanish. 
The daily instructional switching is methodically planned to support the metacognitive development of both languages in content areas such as math, reading, writing, science, and now social studies. Research in neuroscience shows that the many benefits cognitively, socially, and financially of having a bilingual brain. So if this program aligns with your vision, please do consider Frank DiSpaziano as your child's second home. With our group of dedicated teachers who buy in the vision of bilingualism, collectively with the support and encouragement of parents and families, we will continue to build a community of bilingual biliterate learners, <laughs> along with our invested community partners, I Heart My People, Festival Ballet, and Ecas Teatro, who all help to make Spaziano a great option. So I hope you decide to become part of our team. All right, thank you so much for that. So we'll go back to, uh, to Messer. We'll give this another shot. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfect, there we go, wonderful. Yeah. That's too bad. <laughs> um, hi, and welcome to um, ASMSA, home of the ASMSA Golden Achievers. My name is Jim Tennant. I am currently the assistant principal at ASMSA. Our principal, Cassandra Henderson, is, I believe, trying to get on. So, Nick, I don't know if you can see her, but she's having an issue getting on. And I understand that Rachel D'Onofio, one of our kindergarten teachers, are joining us right now. So real quickly, we are located at 1655 West Minster Street in the West End. Um, we currently have classes grade, from grades pre-K to four. The, re uh, the reason we do not have a fifth grade is that we um, share a campus with West, West Broadway Middle School. And um, so it's kind of nice because once the kids get done with a semester, they seamlessly move into West Broadway. So they're basically together for eight years, which uh, a lot of our parents, parents like. Uh, we currently have 27 classroom teachers and two resource teachers. As I said before, we have four um, K classes. Um, we have a very strong PBIS system, which our um, ex school-wide expectations are um, say kind things, do kind things, and uh, keep your hands and feet to yourself. Um, our, the behavior at ASMSA, I have to say I came from another school, the behavior at ASMSA, I mean, my principal and I speak about it all the time. We cannot believe how great our kids truly, truly are. Um, we also have a pretty strong family engagement um, relationship with our families. Um, hopefully this coming year with COVID behind us, it'll get stronger. And we have a very active uh, PTA, which we just actually met with um, last week, um, talking about events that were coming up in the, uh, in the spring, like a dance-a-thon and field day and uh, stuff like that. Right now we are currently um, partnering with PPAC and uh, we are participating in 101 Dalmatians musical, which we will have two showings this year and we're actually gonna be performing at PPAC in June. Um, we have a student body of around 530 students. Our, like I said before, our staff is 27 teachers, uh, 27 teachers, two resource. Our entire staff is around 71 to 75 um, Great people. I'm, I've never worked with people like this in my life. And I'm telling you the truth here. Um, we also have a partnership with Inspiring Minds, as Lauro does. And that is all that I have to say, unless Mr. Norfio would like to um, echo or pile on our greatness. Sure, I can add on. Um, I was just going to mention that we really do strive to embrace the whole child. We have grades pre-K through four, uh, like Mr. Tennant said, and it's awesome to see how our fourth grade students feed into West Broadway and how they often come back over to the school to find the teachers that they've had. Um, and it's great making those connections with them. Um, the other thing I was gonna say was, um, we have a great climate culture committee where we work very strongly with our PTO 
And we really strive to make learning fun for all students, um, embracing all, all cultures and um, your engagement as parents and families coming into our school is very important to us. And we look forward to partner, partnering with you to make your child's schooling the most successful it can be. Excellent, thank you, Rachel. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll move over to Webster. Good afternoon, everyone. I am extremely excited to be here and I wanna thank uh, Mr. Figueroa and Ms. Pe um, Ms. Pichardo for putting this together. I think that this is such a great opportunity for us, the principal here at Providence to talk to our parents and showcase our school to the new kindergartners, students coming up next year. Um, I have um, a very a special place in my heart for kindergarten students. So um, I am excited. Um, so what about Webster? Webster Avenue is a very wonderful, diverse community school. We have um, around 335 students um, and our faculty and students are very diverse. We have about 25 faculty and staff um, in our school. Uh, I have a principal, which is me, Carolina Creel, and I also have an assistant principal who is in the call, Mr. BK. He likes to be called Mr. BK, um, and he has a lot to say. So, <laughs> um, we also have a great guidance counselor this year, which is doing wonderful uh, work with our students. Uh, we have an extraordinary social worker. She's um, a piece of a pie. She's like the best thing that ever happened to Webster. Um, we have two wonderful coaches. One is a math coach uh, and a literacy coach. And we also have two wonderful resource teachers. Uh, the staff that I just mentioned, they work uh, very closely with our students um, and our teachers. So they are very, very uh, essential to what we do here at Webster. Um, we also have a great curriculum. Uh, I want parents to understand that here at Webster, we really focus on making sure that your child is ready for reading, writing, and math. Um, those are the sort of like the core curriculum. Uh, when I talk to a family um, all the time, I, I express the importance of having students reading every day at home for at least um, you know, 10 minutes, if you're a kindergarten child, if you are a first grade student, you should be reading at least 20 minutes. And if you are a student, uh, grades two, three, four, and five, it should be at least 25 minutes. So we stress the importance of reading every day and also to make sure that the math is also be practiced at home. So um, again, parents, if you're in the call, those are the things that you must be doing every day with your child, every day, every day, every day. Um, or values. Um, here at Webster, we are very, very, uh, we have high expectation for our students when it comes to uh, the way we, you know, behave. But I like to say, instead of using the behavior word, I like to say the way we conduct ourselves. Um, we have high expectations for our students on, on the, in that regard, and we also have high values. Uh, we are the Webster Bears. Every child in my school, as they are walking the hallways, they know they are the Webster Bears and they have to be responsible, respectful, and safe. Uh, so we preach these values every day, every day, every day. Um, also, we have a very strong connection with our families. Um, if you know anything about server works, if you have Webster family, you know that I was very, <laughs> very aggressive in making sure that that survey was taken. And I'm happy to report that 90% uh, of my family took this survey. So I'm very, very proud of you, Webster family, if you are in the call. Um, our students are in the center of every decision that we make. I want to repeat that. At Webster Avenue, Avenue Elementary, every decision that we've made our students are in the center of it. And then the families, but our kids matter. And we wanna make sure that every decision that we make 
is uh, to measure our students strive and they are successful. Um, let me have Mr. BK, do you wanna say a few things? Sure, <clears throat> thank you for that uh, great description of Webster Ave Elementary. I am Mr. BK Norton, uh, the students call me Mr. BK at Webster. Um, you know, just to sort of add to what uh, Catalina Creel said is we have a very tight knit community. It's a small building, very formally family oriented. Uh, I believe over 50 or 60 siblings attend our school right now. Uh, it's a neighborhood school. We only have uh, three bus, well, two, three buses, uh, one bus only half filled. Most of the students are walkers from our neighborhood. Um, uh, very, uh, many of the students stay for their K through five career at our building. Um, we're developing what we call the Webster way. Uh, and like Ms. Creel said, we are the bears and that's be your best excellence in education, act kind, responsible and safety. Our students embody this every single day. Um, and it's just a really uh, fun, tight knit, uh, loving family oriented uh, school. Um, it's thoroughly enjoyable there. So uh, please reach out if you have any questions for us. Um, we look forward to seeing our two brand new classes of kindergarten for next year. Thank you. Let's move over to Carnivale. Good afternoon, everyone. My name, can you hear me? Perfect. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Cindy Gier. I'm the principal of Anthony Carnavali, and I am very excited to be here. My assistant principal, um, is, um, Elizabeth Northup, is also here with us today. And um, again, thank you, families, for um, coming to this exciting affair today. Uh, we are the Dolphins and um, we serve students from pre-K to fifth grade um, students. And we are a very tight community, well diverse and very inclusive um, school community. Our programs include uh, autism, uh, ECS, uh, ESL integrated, uh, inclusion, and uh, a regular ed program. So we have uh, between 475 to 500 students. And we have about 12 buses and we have um, a lot of walkers. So um, we have a hundred uh, staff members, which um, like I said, they're very tight, love our students and are always very, very involved in everything that we do. As the students are the uh, most important things for us as well as, as our families. Um, we are also, um, our vision is to ensure that all our students strive to exceed grade level standards in a safe, caring, and inclusive uh, school community. Uh, we provide an inclusive and comprehensive educational environment that supports a strong academic foundation for all learners. Our amazing teachers work extremely hard and together and collaborate to improve learning and ensure that our students achieve, succeed, and leave Anthony Carnavali as uh, lifelong learners and successful productive members of society. Our, um, we have high expectations from students, um, teachers, staff members, all of our families at Carnavali. Um, we have high expectations for everyone as we uh, strive and encourage love for education. Uh, we um, here at Carnavali every day, we uh, tell our, our students to be kind, respectful, responsible, and most importantly, ready to learn. And, and I tell you, our students, every morning, there I ask them, what are we here for? And they all say, we're ready and we're ready to learn. So that's um, something that um, I love about every or all of our students, because that's what we do here at Carnavali. Um, Mrs. Northup, I don't know, uh, could you please um, share with us about our school? Hello, everybody. My name is Beth Northup. Good afternoon. Um, I'm the assistant principal at Anthony Carnavali Elementary School. Ms. Giard and I work along 100 staff members to support the academic and social emotional needs of our almost 500 students. As Ms. Giard stated, we are one of two schools in the district to have a pre-K to fifth grade autism and ECS strand. Additionally, we have a K to fifth grade inclusion and integrated MLL strand. Last year, our school was featured in the New York Times and Providence Journal. I'm sure you have seen our beautiful principal, Ms. Giard, in those pictures uh, for our academic gains. Despite the pandemic, Carnivali thrived academically because all the hard work of our teachers, students, and families. We could not do what we do daily on a daily basis in our building without them. 
Um, our school community fosters an inclusive community for all our students. So that means our gym, our music, and our art classes have our autism and ECS classrooms integrated with our general ed and inclusion classrooms. At the beginning of the year, Families also receive a calendar of events that include monthly awards, STEM family days, literacy nights, spirit weeks, and in May, we will be hosting our annual taco night. Here at Carnivali, as Ms. Giard said, we, we are kind, respectful, responsible, and ready to learn. Ms. Giard and I hope we will have the opportunity to welcome your child to one of our 3K classrooms in September. Also, just to add, uh, our music program includes guitar, uh, chorus, um, and uh, bucket drumming. So they're very involved, and we have a dancing program after school as well. And we are hopefully next year, we also will have other um, after school programs for our students. So thank you, and have a wonderful afternoon. And I hope your children can come to us. We're looking forward to meet all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Carnavali. We'll move over to our friends at the bait. Uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Beautiful. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Figueroa and Ms. Pichardo for hosting this event today on behalf of our families uh, and providing me an opportunity to speak first about our district um, to our families and parents that are out there. I'm going to start with congratulations um, because your children are about to attend the best district in the state of Rhode Island. We spend approximately $18,000 per student per year. So that's about a $100 investment per day per child. We have the best technology in the state of Rhode Island. We have smart boards in every classroom. Our students have a one-to-one -one ratio with Chromebooks. That's in all of our schools. That's not just that debate. And I'll talk about debate a little bit later. But our schools are fully staffed. We have some of the best, most highly trained teachers in the state of Rhode Island, maybe even in the country. Um, we receive a lot of federal funds for professional development. And our district does an amazing job making sure that all of our staff are highly trained. So when your children come to school, and I know it's a scary time, I'm a parent, I get it. And releasing your five-year-old out the door for the first time to go to school, oh my God. Yep, I get it. And we know it too. Um, but they are going into the best hands possible uh, with the staff that we have in our schools. We all now have so school counselors in our buildings post-COVID. Uh, uh, to help with social emotional learning. The impact of COVID not only hit academically, but it also hit uh, with the social emotional. Our schools are well aware of it, well prepared for it in supporting our students and families like nothing you've ever seen before. It's tremendous. Wait till you see how our schools operate. Again, scary times, but our district is ready and we're growing and we're making progress. And we want your children coming to our schools, no place else, not charter schools, not private schools, we need them in our schools. And if I lived uh, you know, next to my school, I would be so happy to have my children attending my school because of the teachers. And I used to think that the teachers were the best part of the school. And I used to tell everybody that our teachers, our teachers, our teachers. And then it dawned on me, it's not the teachers, it's the families. It's the students and families that come into our schools. The way you love your children, support your children, that's really why we're successful. And the more involved you are with your children, the more likely they'll be to be successful at school. So I'm actually gonna take a minute to reach out to our families to tell you, ask you, please be involved with your children on a daily basis. It's not easy, we have competing priorities, but you have got to make sure that your child is in school every day, ask them how their day went, check their book bag, read with them, go over some math facts with them. The more involved you are, the better their school experience will be. And if you set that tone the first year of school, which is kindergarten, Every year thereafter is that much better. So I'm pleading with all of our families, get involved, be involved, be part of the PTO, be involved in the after school activities and you and your family will have the best experience possible. Our particular school, William DeBate Elementary is in the only bill section of Providence. We happen to be a three-star school. We've earned that rating from the Rhode Island Department of Ed for two years in a row. We're only, one of only five schools in the entire district to be a three-star school for two years in a row. It's an amazing achievement. And again, I'll go back to thanks to our families, thanks to our students, and thanks to our staff. That's the only reason you can get there. But we also have tremendous community partnerships. Brown University, an Ivy League institution, sends close to 100 of their students every week into our building to help with tutoring during the day, to help with after-school programs, and to just better support our students and families. It's amazing, you should see it, it happens on a daily basis. 
that's something that your children can have available to them if they come to debate elementary school. We have a growth mindset in our school whereby we recognize and celebrate that not every student enters school on the same level or with the same abilities even for that matter. But that's okay. Because if you come to school every day, we guarantee you that your child will grow at least one year in that school year and probably a year and a half to two years worth of growth every year if your child attends school regularly. I guarantee that. Send your child to our school and watch. I'll stand behind that promise every single day. We have approximately 400 students in our building. We're kindergarten through fifth grade. We have a bilingual strand, which means that on each grade level, we have one bilingual classroom and typically two English uh, classrooms. We're moving towards what's called English as a second language classroom uh, model. And next year, we will have that available on every grade level as well. So next year, we expect to have one bilingual classroom, one ESL classroom, and one regular ed classroom per grade level thereby being able to accommodate any family that enters our building. And again, like I said to our support, support professionals from the nurse to the speech pathologist, occupational therapist, all those folks, state-of-the-art, unbelievable professionals. Thank you, Principal Kerman. I'll turn it over to you, Bailey. Hi, good morning. My name is Alicia Jones. I'm the principal at Robert Bailey Elementary School. Um, I do have a kindergarten teacher with me, Caroline Majacomo. I don't know if she's been having trouble um, being added as a panelist. Um, so if someone could work on that, that would be great. Um, but again, I'm representing Bailey Elementary School. We're located at 65 Gordon Avenue. Um, we are the Bailey Bears. We are responsible, respectful, and ready to learn. We offer, so we offer grades kindergarten through grade five. Our current enrollment is about 415 students. Um, Mr. Matthew Brown is our assistant principal. We have a math and literacy coach for our school and our students. We offer ESL integrated classrooms at every grade level. We offer three different types of special education services for our students. We offer many supports for our students, including a full-time guidance counselor, full-time social worker, a full-time speech teacher, a full-time behavior coach, and a full-time reading specialist. Uh, we have many partnerships with community agencies. We have a 21st century grant with the YMCA. The YMCA currently offers two types of after-school programming. One is academically based. We have a partnership with City Year, and we have city year volunteers in all of our classrooms at grades three, four, and five. We have several inspiring minds volunteers in all of our grade level classrooms. We have a partnership with JSEC High School, which is our neighbor, um, where we have several students uh, volunteer in classrooms. And those are students who are um, interested in pursuing a career in the field of education. So we see them multiple times per week. We have a partnership with Rhode Island College uh, where we host several student teachers, both for uh, regular education and special education placements. We have a partnership with Boy Scouts of Rhode Island who offer uh, weekly Cub Scout meetings for boys and girls. We offer counseling services within our school through Family Services of Rhode Island. And uh, next week, we are beginning a partnership with um, several therapy dogs uh, to service our students. Our, our school was built in 2000. It's a bright, beautiful learning environment. Kindergarten classrooms are quite large. Each classroom has a student bathroom within the classroom. And we offer enrichment programs for our students on Friday afternoons. Um, and part of the reason we're able to do this is because we have full-time specialists, but we also have a very large gym, a quite a large library, a beautiful art and music rooms as well. So we are able to offer those enrichment classes to our students on Friday afternoons. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Bailey, we will now move to Fogarty. Good 
morning. My name is Courtney Monteresi. I'm the principal at Mary Fogarty Elementary School. Our school is located just a few blocks away from Bailey, uh, where Principal Jones just spoke about. We are at 199 Oxford Street. We are very close by to the Southside Boys and Girls Club, where we have um, after school and before school care and transportation provided to our students. We have the capacity to house 544 students and our current enrollment is about 430. We have an assistant principal, Ms. Samantha Stringfellow, as well as several full-time staff members who support our students, such as our school counselor, school social worker. We have a part-time psychologist. We have a reading and a math coach. Uh, we have, as just as Principal Jones mentioned, we have ESL programming and special ed programming for our learners, depending on which grade level, they can be placed in the best fit classroom for their needs. Um, we have partnerships with Family Service, AmeriCorps, with Books Are Wings and Inspiring Minds. And through those partnerships, we are able to provide services for students on a multitude of different needs. We have after school programming that comes and picks students up right at Fogarty. We have Love for All. I mentioned the Boys and Girls Club. We have so many different avenues for students who need programming or before and after school care. You can always just inquire. If your child comes to Fogarty, we'll set you up with the best fit for, for them. We also have a partnership with Classical High School. It's been put on pause during the pandemic and we look forward to picking it up next year. We have classroom tutors. They will, students from classical will come over and tutor and mentor our students. Um, we have an after school program to enrich the daily learning and give students a boost after school. We're in the middle of having that program right now. It ends in May. We have several extracurricular activities for students such as our basketball team, our ice skating club, uh, we have a cheerleading program, a band, a chorus, a chess club. We have a lot of different ways for students to get involved. Um, and we have a lot of family engagement events such as our big back to school bash in August, our harvest festival every fall. We have several family dances throughout the year such as our Valentine's dance and our Hollywood dance. Um, some of these events were paused due to COVID. And again, we look forward to starting that up again next year. And each Wednesday morning, we host Coffee by the Curb and we greet our families outside in the morning at drop-off. So we feel that we are always very accessible to parents and families. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them about Fogarty. Thank you very much. All right, we will move now from uh, Fogarty to Youngwoods. Hi everyone, my name is William Riley. Um, I am the new principal over at Youngwoods Elementary School, home of the Wise Owls. Uh, we have a fantastic assistant principal named Kelly Spaziano. Uh, she's absolutely wonderful and we're very blessed to have her at Youngwoods. Um, we are also one of the newer facilities in Providence. Um, we have currently about 650 students pre-K through grade five. Um, we have fantastic art, new uh, library and PE programs. Um, library is actually something that we're looking to really take into the 21st century and provide our students with options for coding programs, uh, computer skills, really get them ready for middle school, high school and beyond. Um, and speaking of that, one of our folks is also really getting our students uh, to really understand what opportunities there are. Each week we have uh, college, career and technical education days where we're really showing our students what options are out there, uh, getting them to ask questions and be inquisitive. Um, we also, uh, a big focus for our school is writing. We want all of our students to be writers. Um, we have a school-wide writing strategy we've implemented. We want our kiddos to be able to explain argument, uh, fight for a cause, evaluate ideas. Uh, and our big focus, really thinking about the end of this year and moving forward, uh, it's really about bringing joy back to our schools. You know, our students have been through so much over the past two years. Uh, we really want to incorporate that social emotional learning into our classrooms. We want our students to be excited for school, engaged in their learning. Um, we have a fantastic school culture an amazing teaching team. Uh, it's building that, you know, I would proudly send my students to, and we really are looking forward to happily serving any of yours. So if you have any questions for us, again, please put it in the chat uh, and thank you for attending today. 
Thank you so much, Young Woods. We will head over to Sackett. Good morning, parents. My name is Jose Valerio. I'm the principal. I'm the principal, and next to me is the assistant principal. Kando Yangu. You know the care about my city, you all. right. Yeah, so our school, um, we have like 408 students. Um, we start at 9.15 and end around 3.30. So we have uniforms. I have one on, and I just wanted to show you the logo here. So um, that logo pretty much, that might have been fast, but we want to tell students self-control to be helpful, accountable, respectful, and kind. So those are the things that um, we, are, we are trying to instill in our kids. Um, the main thing that we want to do is kindergarten, to me, is one of the most important grades or the most important if your child is at level in kindergarten, he's gonna love, he or she is gonna love school. So we make it a big, big push to make sure students um, will, um, will, we give them the individualized help and kind of prepare them so that they will succeed. If they succeed in kindergarten, they're gonna succeed in all other grades. So, um, you know, for me in second grade, I knew I was um, gonna be a teacher in second grade. So we have the same idea that I'm trying to instill um, or help your, your child. Um, the earlier they can be at level, the better they're gonna like school again. So um, each of our classroom is named after university. So we also want to um, prepare the students to think they are gonna go to college from an early age. Not, we don't wanna ask them in high school, are they going to college? We wanna prepare them um, you know, from kindergarten. So um, what we do for that, we also have our third through fifth graders attend colleges. So each year, um, students in third grade will attend one college, fourth grade another college, and then fifth grade another college. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, we had to cancel some of those trips. Um, but um, one other thing we have, we, have, we offer ESL classroom in each grade level, a bilingual classroom in each level, and then a regular ed classroom in each level. Um, so we have 16, those are 18 classrooms altogether, and then three special ed classes. <laughs> yeah, so some of the things we offer also, um, we have a recreation center. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, we have a recreation center that's connected to the school. So students are able to stay um, at the school until 530. Um, we also, what I also do is utilize like the gym teacher, art teacher, music teacher, and they go into classrooms and also provide small group help so that your child will be at grade level. So that's one of our goals. Um, just like all the other schools, we have partnerships like with Inspiring Minds, um, foster grandparents. Um, we believe it takes a village to educate a child. So if you would like to volunteer in the classroom here, you're also welcome. The more hands we have, um, the better in order to support every child at school. Ms. Nilda, did I forget something? Um, well, I'm going to show you what um, our classroom, our school, sorry. Yeah, our school that? is going to be 100 years old. So, um, you know, it's an old school, but we have a lot of, I'm in the classroom right now. It's an older school, but um, a lot of nice things go on in the classroom, if you can see it. And um, so we just wanted to come to school to show you an example of what a classroom looks like. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Uh, thank you, Sackett. Let's move over to, if we can go to Reservoir. Good morning. Good morning. Cynthia Torres. I am the principal at Reservoir Avenue Elementary, home of the Robins. Uh, we are Robins because we're respectful, optimistic, brilliant. We have integrity and we never give up. Our, our school is located at 156. Reservoir Avenue. We have a wonderful assistant principal, Carrie Montoya. We're very proud to be an engaged community of learners. We're all learners, adults and students. Uh, we have currently 278 students enrolled in our school. We are a very small school with 12 classrooms. Next year, we will be fully integrated um, and uh, we also have uniforms. We have red or white polo shirts with khaki pants. And um, 
95, 96% of our students wear them proudly. Um, we take pride in reinforced positive behaviors in our school. So our students receive Robin Box for every time they're caught in a good action that reflects our principles. And on Fridays, they have the opportunity to shop with their Robin dollars in our school store. Uh, and it, uh, it is a very exciting uh, day <laughs> for the students when they get to uh, go and receive something for all their hard work. Uh, we also offer attendance rewards for those students that are in school uh, for 95% of the time and those that improve, uh, make improvement in their attendance. Uh, we also may have a lot of competitions uh, going throughout the year. Monthly, we do have a reading monthly challenge when we record the minutes that all our students uh, read and then they are rewarded um, each month with gift certificates uh, to different uh, places. Um, we have uh, partnerships with ECAS. Um, ECAS is a Spanish theater, theater company and they provide music appreciation classes twice per week in our school. We have a very um, strong relationship with Elmwood Little League and the Elmwood um, Neighborhood Association. We host high school students from Alvarez High School. These, we are hosting currently eight students that are thinking in going into education when they um, pursue college. So they're um, currently um, volunteering in we have four students in our kindergarten classrooms. We have two amazing kindergarten teachers, Kimberly Resendiz and Faye Etchingham. Uh, we would like to welcome you to visit our school and see what we're, what we are about. Um, we take a lot of pride being so small in knowing all our students and um, their families. We have an open door policy. You want to talk to us? We we are here for you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We'll move over to Leviton. Good morning, I am Jennifer Walker. I'm the principal at the Leviton Dual Language School. We are located at 65 Greenwich Street, very close to um, Fort Lima, who will speak next. Um, we have currently 285 students in kindergarten to grade five. We are also a very small school and we are proudly the only school in the district that is currently fully dual language. All of our classrooms are dual language classrooms, which means that our students share two teachers. They um, work with one teacher in English and they work with another teacher in Spanish in a daily rotation. They learn all their subject matters in both languages, and our primary mission is to create biliterate and bicultural students. We honor home languages, we honor home cultures. The majority of my staff is bilingual. Many of my staff members, including myself, are products of the Providence Public Schools. I currently live in Providence, very close to Sackett. Um, community is a huge part of of what we do. Um, our school is a lottery school. In order to apply for kindergarten at my school, you enter into a lottery. Our classrooms consist of half English language learners and half um, English dominant students. Our culture is most important to us. Uh, we, our mantra is to cooperate, collaborate, communicate, and be kind. We start every day with a morning meeting. Um, like Reservoir, because we are so small, we know all of our students by name, we know all of our families, and we have the unique situation that by fifth grade, all of our students will have had all of the teachers in our school, because at every grade, they share both teachers. So we're very much a family in that way. Our school is tiny. Um, what we lack in facility, we make up for in heart. Um, it's a new newish school also built in 2002. 
We have a brand new um, social emotional learning room that I'm very excited about where our guidance counselor and social workers um, can work in small groups. They can do individual therapy. It has very, um, has flexible seating and different nooks where students can go to relax or to seek support or to work out an issue. Um, and that's a new addition to our school. Uh, currently we are working with Providence Public Schools and doing Disney. Our students are performing the Jungle Book and they're doing an amazing job. It's very exciting. Next year, we hope to have our first basketball team. Um, like Reservoir also, our door is open. Families are very important to us. And um, because the majority of my staff is bilingual, anybody can come in and um, speak with anyone on our staff and have their needs met in a very um, immediate way. And also we welcome visits, come and see us and see what we do. Our students are lovely and engaged and happy and um, excited to learn in both languages. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, we have Ford Slima uh, here at the end. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to let you know that Charles Forts is the lower school and Alfred Lima is the upper school. We've merged together for the next year. Our school name will be Alfred Lima. Our school serves grades kindergarten through fifth grade. We have a total of 714 students. We have dual language in kindergarten. We have ESL integrated in kindergarten and we will have an inclusion in kindergarten as well. Those kindergarten classrooms look different. The dual language students learn Spanish and English and share two teachers. The ESL integrated classrooms are classrooms where students are learning English and there are also English, not native English speakers in the classroom with a certified teacher who is able to teach ESL students. We believe that integration is in community is the most important thing and inclusion. So we're an inclusive environment where all languages and learning disability, learning differences are welcomed. Therefore, we have lots of different ways to support students. We have special education resource teachers. We have speech teachers, occupational therapists. We offer music, art, library, gym, health. We have a chorus with our music teacher and we also are taking our students every year to a um, singing event festival that will happen every year in June. We have a wonderful library media specialist who specializes in STEM activities for students. And also um, she's adept at helping parents and students with um, social media safety and helping parents negotiate technology. We use an app called Class Dojo, which translates in any language you need. It's kind of like Facebook for your classroom. So teachers at the beginning of the year will ask parents to join Class Dojo. And that way they'll post pictures of activities that are happening in the classroom, send news and information, and you'll always be able to engage in two-way conversations. And once you sign up for Class Dojo, you know, every year that your child is in our school, that moves on to the next teacher and you'll be able to communicate with your teachers. I have a literacy coach that specializes in multilingual learners. I have a literacy coach that specializes in upper grades literacy, meaning three, four, and five. We also have a math coach who supports our school with math learning. We have a partnership with the YMCA and the YMCA offers an after-school program um, from after school until 5.30. Students can join that after-school program for enrichment activities. And every year from January to May, we offer an academic enrichment after-school component that is free. The YMCA does have a sliding scale, so it's really based on whatever you can afford to pay. You can pay for the after-school program. We're located right next to the West End Community Center. And the West End Community Center also provides before school and after school care. We also partner with several after school agencies. We have the Boys and Girls Club picks up students and drops them off to our school. 
we have um, Love for All, El Bebe, and several home daycares that we support transitions with students. Our school hours are eight o'clock. Students, students can arrive as early as 7.30 to eight o'clock, and our school day ends at 2.15. We provide, the school department provides busing if you live um, not close to the school. And we have about 714 students at this point servicing grades K through five. Our literacy curriculum is American Reading Company. And we support phonics instruction with uh, foundations and estrellitas in Spanish. If you'd like to know more about our school, please visit our website. Or at any time, you can call our main office and ask for information. Also, we have kindergarten readiness flyers in our main office. So everything you need to know about how to get ready for kindergarten, you're welcome to stop by the main office at our school and pick up informational pamphlets and flyers. Thank you. George J. West. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm so glad everybody can make it today. My name is Denise Mystery. I'm the principal of George J. West. We're lucky we have two additional, we have two uh, vice principals as well, Mrs. Farhat and Mrs. Uh, Sanapi. Our school, we have a, a full-time nurse, uh, Ms. O'Donnell, and we will also be hosting a smart clinic soon uh, so that we will hopefully be able to provide wraparound social, emotional, and health supports. We have a psychologist, Ms. Pagliarini, a guidance counselor, Ms. Campbell, and a social worker, Ms. Nelson. So uh, we, we are confident that we have uh, full wraparound supports for our students. Uh, we have community partners as well. Uh, we partner with the Providence Center, Roger Williams University. Uh, they give us uh, student teachers as well as uh, provide tutoring for our second grade students. Uh, Junior Achievement of Rhode Island Festival Ballet uh, gives us dance pro uh, dance program on Tuesday afternoons for our uh, second and third graders. And um, we also partner and get volunteers from Inspiring Minds. George J. West is a wonderful community. We have lots of spirit days uh, at where our students and teachers participate uh, and that helps us to build community. We have a total of 660 students at our school. We have kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, we offer both general education programming, um, L, uh, ESL, English is uh, multilingual, uh, multi multilingual education uh, in integrated classrooms. We have special ed inclusion and resource. Uh, like I said, we have 643 students and a faculty and staff of about 75 to 80 children. We are dedicated to increasing the academic growth while enhancing the social emotional learning of our students. We are, as uh, Nick said, we're located in the Mount Pleasant area. Our school hours are from 915 to 330. Uh, again, we focus on social emotional learning. We have a rigor rigorous curriculum moving toward personalized learning. We have a focus on student goal setting so they know that uh, they have the power to achieve and every choice is theirs and they can uh, climb those stairs to reach their ultimate goal, which is the top of the stairs. Uh, we have after some after school programming, um, again, just the dance and the tutoring and we have kindness ambassadors. Uh, policies and procedures, um, we open our school. Uh, we have early arrival 10 minutes before school starts. Um, that's us in a nutshell. So I look forward to answering any questions or, or uh, any questions when you're ready. All right, thank you, Wes, appreciate that. Uh, we'll move over to Pleasant View. Good afternoon. I'm Tracy Lerner, and I'm the principal of Pleasant View Elementary. Um, my assistant principal is Ms. Rachel Phillips. Uh, we have um, 300 students, K to five, and we have 140 students in pre-K, our pre-K program. Um, we consider ourselves a, a warm and welcoming community. Those little ones, um, keep our older ones um, in check. We have um, 
third, fourth, and fifth graders that serve as safety patrol and help with our little ones throughout the building. Um, we are the only school in the city that has a pool. So as part of our PE program, the children do have access to swimming. So we do have, we have two classrooms at kindergarten, two classrooms each at K to five. One classroom is um, special ed inclusion. So the class is mixed uh, general education and special education students. And the second class is an ELL, English as a second, um, English language learners, integrated classroom. Our class size is anywhere from 20 to 25 students. Um, we also have partnerships with community organizations, uh, city year, um, young um, workers from city year, their early 20s or graduates of college that are are working and helping in our school. Uh, we also have partnerships with Inspiring Minds and um, student teachers from Rhode Island College. We have a partnership with Rhode Island College because of where we're located in the Mount Pleasant area. We're very close to them. We'll be under construction in the, in the spring, but we're looking forward to great new improvements for our school. So we'll have a short period of time where things are a little upended, but great stuff in the end will come out of that. Um, like the other schools, we use the ARC reading program and the Eureka math program. Um, we promote hands-on activities and use of manipulatives, small group instruction. Um, we have a reading and a math coach. Um, and um, we're a Feinstein leadership school, which means we're involved in um, community service and other supports, our kindness tree and our food pantry and so forth. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Pleasant View. Let's go over to Kennedy. Do we have Kennedy? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is yep. Kim Zona. I am the principal of Robert F. Kennedy. We are located at 195 Nelson Street. It is right between Fargnoli Park on Smith Street and LaSalle Bakery, also on Smith Street. Our hours are 9.15 to 3.30. When we are at capacity, we hold 468 students. Our school is lucky to have a, an assistant principal, Mr. Timothy Marum. We offer three kindergarten classes and our program includes regular education and integrated multilingual lingual learner classes. Um, some other supports that we have include a full-time social worker and a school counselor that supports students and classroom teachers with our social emotional needs. We have a full-time reading specialist and a reading coach that supports students with all areas of reading. We use, like other elementary schools, we use American Reading Company as our reading program. We also have a full-time math coach to support our students with math in all areas. We, like other elementary schools, are using the Eureka program. We have two full-time uh, physical education teachers, a fully functioning library, a beautiful art and music room. We do have a very active uh, PTA that supports um, special functions after and during school. Um, we also have the Providence Center Recreation that is located in our gym, which offers before and after school programming for all our students. And lastly, we have some partnerships with Providence College, the University of Rhode Island, and Inspiring Minds. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Let's move into our next school which is uh, VZ. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Colleen Caswell, principal at VZ Street School. Um, we also have about 550 students in our school. We're located on the north end on VZ Street. Um, we have grades K through five, uh, regular education and ESL sheltered. 
And next year, we will be having uh, four classrooms to support students um, on the autism spectrum. We have um, multiple um, vans that take students to after school programs off site. And we are an early school. We are um, 8 o'clock to 2.15. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we also have full time music, library, and art. Um, we're lucky enough to have a kiln. So our art teacher does ceramics with the students. Um, she also incorporates a lot of social emotional learning with our school counselor and social worker in a lot of her lessons. So she's been doing a lot of art therapy with our students. Um, and we have two full-time uh, physical education students, uh, teachers rather, um, that support our students. And they also support our students in the autism program with the adaptive physical education. Hi everybody, uh, Matt Russo here from Gregorian, the principal. We have uh, just brought on an AP this year as well. Uh, Mr. Brooks, have, just like everyone else says, we have a, a pretty robust staff at this point with the wellness team, psychologist, social worker. We'll be hiring a full-time guidance counselor next year. Um, we have a very close working partnership with our families. We have a lot of family events throughout the year, starting with kindergarten orientation, fall festival, all throughout the year. On Saturday, April 9th, we will have um, a work day in which the community gathers to, to beautify some of the outdoor spaces. And we're going to be offering some open house times at that time. So if anyone's interested, come on by. It'll be at 9.30 and at 12 o'clock. We also have some really strong community partnerships with Brown University, the Avenue Concept, which has done a lot of work on the exterior of the building. We have the Boys and Girls Club before and after school programming. We are building a STEM room in collaboration with Brown University. And that will be, all students will have the opportunity throughout the week to use that. And that'll be ready in September. So that's a very exciting project we have. We have an SEL curriculum that we just started this year. It's called Caring Schools. And it basically, every classroom has a morning meeting um, as part of the program. And we also do a lot of school-wide events and school-wide messaging to really promote social emotional awareness and learning around topics such as kindness, which is one of our focuses this week. A lot of our students, after they leave here, they, they either go to Bishop um, or, or Green. That's typically the pathway uh, through here. We do a lot of personalization of learning. We, we look at data in real time. And we, you know, sometimes that leads to enrichment and sometimes that leads to adjusting instruction in one way or the other. So we're, we're really, our, our academic leadership team does a lot of work in that area along with our classroom teachers. We have two of every grade from K to K to five, and then we have four self special ed self-contained classrooms. We do have uh, Kazarian um, in the, on the panel. So I will turn it over to, uh, to you for four minutes uh, to talk about your wonderful school. Hi, my name is Danny Smith. I'm principal at Harry Kazarian Elementary School, and we're located on Camden Ave, Smith Hill section of Providence. We have about um, 550 students at the school from preschool through fifth grade. We're really excited to have the preschool program um, at our school. And, and I think that's a great addition to our staff, uh, to our school community. Uh, we focus a lot on uh, supporting our um, multilingual learners. We have uh, several classes that uh, help our kids with their English language acquisition. And uh, that's been very, very successful. We also are doing a lot of work with uh, fine arts. We have a full-time music teacher, full-time arts teacher, and we've um, <clears throat> foc um, focused some of our efforts through our specials programs <clears throat> to support um, those uh, areas such as getting a Disney musical um, opportunity for our students to perform at Providence Performing Arts Center and, and helping kids with their interest in um, music, dance, and art. We have a variety of um, after-school programs, such as YMCA, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Community Music Works, um, where students can learn how to play uh, some different musical instruments at a very, very low rate. 
for families. And this year we started a before school program um, where kids can be dropped off as early as eight o'clock to uh, experience some new opportunities uh, and also maybe get some extra help with some of their academics. Right, right now we have 35 students enrolled in that and we're uh, going to be increasing that number to about 50, 52 uh, students. And that helps uh, some of our families as well with um, before school and after school care. Uh, we're a, a 915 school and sometimes that uh, can be difficult for families. It's a wonderful welcoming community and uh, we look forward to having you at our school. All right, thank you so much for that information. At, uh, at Broad Street, um, we also have uh, a full-time PE and health teacher, um, part-time art, music, and um, library. Our, our music teacher does run a, uh, a band club um, for the students. Um, and then they also have as uh, an after-school program, we have the Frozen, um, uh, frozen plays, the Disney Frozen plays that uh, the students participate in as well. So currently um, we do have um, with art, uh, PE and health, and then we do have um, library and um, and after school programs, I'm sorry, my son is right. Uh, the after school programs, we have uh, the Disney program. We do have, we're working with the Boys and Girls Club. We just filed for a, a um, 21st century grant so we can have before and after school program uh, at the school. In addition, we want to uh, also have swim club, uh, swim classes as well. That's something that we talked about uh, um, having at Broad Streets and, uh, for the next uh, upcoming year. I will now pass it over to uh, our colleagues in registration, Cheryl McCray and uh, Manuela Rap uh, Raposo. Hi, I am Manuela Raposo, Director of Student Placement. I'm joined by Cheryl McCray, Director of Operations. Today, we'll be talking to you a little bit more about registration and enrollment for incoming kindergartners, as well as the process for the, K the kindergarten lottery and what you need to know in order to register your child. Okay, one second. So uh, where are we located? Many people don't know where we are located. We are not in the main building on Westminster. We are at 325 Ocean Street in Providence, Rhode Island. So who is eligible for kindergarten in September? Any child who turns five by September 1st of this incoming school year is eligible for kindergarten. Our registration dates for K in order to be on time for the lottery are February 7th, 2022 until May 13th, 2022. So it, registration uh, for kindergarten is now in process. So when is a child completed? Um, the child's registration is completed and they are ready for a placement or the lottery once every, all, every parent has brought in the required documentation and it has been presented and approved and the health verification is complete. Once the re registration interview has taken place, a child may need testing for English, uh, English language screening or may need an IEP review if the child has an IEP. Once all of the above has been completed, the child is enrolled in Providence Public Schools and is ready for the choice lottery or school placement. What are the required documents? The required doc documents are an original birth certificate, passport, or I-94 card, the parent's photo ID, proof of residency, proof of immunizations and latest physical, an IEP if the child has one, and all documents must be the original or a certified copy. No school placements or entrance into the lottery will happen without all of this being presented and the registration being completed. What is a, an example of a proof of residency? It can be a lease, a pay stub, a mortgage statement, Section 8 agreement, gas, electric, landline, phone bill, or cable bill, a bank statement. All of this must be 
dated within 60 days with the exception of the lease. It can be a yearly lease. If none of this is available, then you will have the option of presenting a notarized affidavit of residential address. This is a form that is available either at the registration center or it can be downloaded off of our website. The proof of residency must be in the name of the guardian of the child. And of course, it, again, it must be dated within 60 days of our receipt. There are several options for registering into Providence Public Schools. One of them is an online pre-registration. Um, I must say that after each of after any of the option that you choose, a team member from my department will give you a call and will process the registration. So as I said, you can go on the link which is provided at the website on our Providence Public Schools website for an online pre-registration, that's one way. Another way is to call in and leave a detailed message with your name, phone number, your intent, which is to register your kindergarten child, and someone will call you back. You can send a message through the Let's Talk link on our website. You can email us at inforeg at ppsd.org. And uh, in this option, you can scan all of the copies of the registration of the registration uh, documents that are required, and you can email them to us. Please do not forget to include your name and contact info, as well as your child's name and date of birth in the email. You may also drop off registrations in person. This is done by coming to 325 Ocean Street in Providence, all state. COVID guidelines will be followed. We ask that only one person per family um, come in to submit registration documentation. We also have a box, a drop box outside of our building for your convenience. So you, if you are unable to email, scan, um, attach documents or any other way that we accept documentation from you, and maybe you can't come during our normal working hours, then you can always drop them off in the Dropbox. For this, I ask that you please submit the required documentations, put them in a bag that is weatherproof, and on the documentations, please add the name of the student and the date of birth of the student, as well as your contact information, and someone will follow up with you. What is the student assignment policy? It, our policy is intended to achieve four major goals to be fair and equity, equitable to every child in Providence, to provide families with greater input into the school that their, their child will attend, to provide students with a greater opportunity to attend their neighborhood school, and to allow siblings to attend the same school as, uh, as their older children. What does school choice mean? It means that families get to tell us their preference in schools rather than simply being assigned to any school. School choice, however, does not guarantee access to any particular school. More seats are reserved for neighborhood schools than non-neighborhood schools at an 80% to 20% ratio. A neighborhood school is a school within one mile of a student's home. However, there are always a minimum of two schools identified as neighborhood schools for each student. These will be the closest schools to the student's home, even if one or both are more than a mile away. So families will always have a minimum of two neighborhood schools, even if they don't have a school within a mile of their home. Also, a child may live in a zone where they have more than two neighborhood schools uh, for, as a choice. There are zones that have three or four neighborhood schools. So what are the things that you must consider when going through school choice? Determine what's important to your child. Do you want all of your children in one school or in different schools? Remember that siblings have a preference. Is having the school closest to your home the most important thing? Does the school have a strong academic performance? Does the school require uniforms? Is that important to you? Are there before and after school programs? Is the PTO active? Is the school's lo location in a favorable place for you and your family? Does your child need busing? 
In most cases, transportation is available to schools over one mile from your home. However, no transportation is available to schools that are located within less, with, within less than one mile from your home. So now I'll let Cheryl talk to you a little bit more about Enroll RI. Cheryl. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, I am, um, as Manuel said, Cheryl McCray, Director of Operations. Uh, today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the um, new um, Enroll Rhode Island Family Information Tool that we are rolling out. And uh, we have been working with the Department of Education on this tool they have the, and to add the Providence Schools to it. Uh, what families can do, you can use the QR code to go here and then it should also be in the chat. There we go. Um, and it is also on the registration page under kindergarten registration. So you can go there to click on that to find it later if you'd like to look at schools. Um, and what it does is it allows families to search schools, explore programs, uh, and learn about profiles for, um, for all of our elementary schools. So you've heard about a few of our schools here on this presentation. We have 21 schools. So that will allow you to look at um, what's important to you um, for any of our schools to make a choice, um, you know, as we want you to come uh, here to Providence. Next slide. So if you were to go on to this site, it will bring you to this page and you can search by your address and it'll pull up schools in your area. It will pull up not only just Providence schools, it also pulls up charter schools as well. You can search by a specific school name, or if there's a specific criteria you're interested in, you can um, narrow it down by that by saying put in grade K and uh, say dual language. It'll pull up all of the dual language schools. So here I had put in an address up top, it would show a map. Um, and these are the, the two school, schools closest to that address I had put in. Um, and so I would say, okay, let me find out some more about George West Elementary. So I'm going to click on that and it would bring up this next screen. So it goes right into the school profile and it shows you different things as far as school hours, um, enrollment, grades offered, who the principal is, what the address is and what the phone number is. And then there's other information um, as you scroll through the whole page. Um, that shows you a map where it's located, um, some school data programs and services offered. So the next slide um, shows you just some more information that's gonna pop up on this page. And there's several links throughout that can pull up. You can find out about star ratings. You can find out about demographics. There's a blurb each school um, has put in um, to learn out about specific things, um, whether it be special education or even just the dance team that you might um, want to highlight. So that's really the Enroll um, Rhode Island app. So I encourage you to take a look at that and research some of the schools that you may want to choose in the lottery. Thank you. You're muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Cheryl. So uh, understanding the lottery process, kindergarten lottery will take place on June 1st of this year. Students are assigned to schools through a computerized student assignment process. If more students choose a school and there are seats available, then there will be a student assignment process to randomly assign students. And this is often called a lottery. Students draw, drawn earliest during this process are assigned to their first choice until seats are filled. Those that were not assigned to their first choice during the first round are considered in the second round for their second choice and so forth. So if seats are not available at the second choice school, then there's a third round and then there's a fourth round. If none of the choices are available after the fourth round, then a student will be assigned to the nearest school to his or her home that has seats available. And notifications of these assignments will be sent out by mail, but are also available online on this PPSD student assignment finder. 
So seat availability is determined by the educational programs offered at each of the schools and the number of classrooms designated for these programs. Some schools may have specific types of seats or fewer choices for your child based on program availability or his, and her, his or her educational needs. Not all programs are, offer, are offered at all of the schools. The educational programs that are offered are general education, special education, bilingual education, dual language program, and ESL, English as a second language. So now I'll explain to you a little bit about how wait lists work. A wait list will be maintained in any grade educational program where demand for seats exceeds supply. So students will be placed on up to four wait lists for schools of higher choice preference. For instance, if a, student, if a student got into his third choice school, he would be automatically placed on the wait list for the first and second choice schools. Wait lists are broken down into four categories. Each of these categories is held for each educational program. So the categories are A, B, C, and D. A would be for neighborhood siblings. If the child has a sibling in a school and is on the wait list, then they would be in the A category, which is the neighborhood sibling school. If they are just living in the neighborhood but want to go to that school and there are no seats, they would fall into the neighborhood category, which would be B. If they would fall into the non, uh, if they're non neighborhood, but they have a sibling, they would fall into the C category. And if they are not in a neighborhood period and have no siblings, they would fall into the D category. Strategies to maintain um, and to maximize your choice. Turn in the forms on time. All of the paperwork, both registrations and choice forms must be in on time to be included in the lottery. If a particular school is desired above all others, list it, make sure you list it as a first choice because high demand schools will be uh, used up first. Neighborhood seats can fill up just as fast as non-neighborhood seats in some schools. If you do not get into the schools of your choice, you will be placed at the closest school with a seat in your ed type. This is our contact information. And uh, this is the student registration office. There's the phone. Um, we also have the contact information listed here for all of the other offices for your, for your information. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. So we are at time. I uh, just want to, again, uh, thank all of the panelists, uh, the administrators for coming out and sharing all the wonderful information and news about what's happening at your schools. Uh, and also wanted to thank, uh, you know, all of the teachers in the school buildings who make this work uh, happen for all of our children and our families. I also love that one of our panelists uh, had his, uh, his two kids on uh, because it also shows that we, we too are parents and, uh, you know, we certainly want to have the best for, uh, for all children across the district. Uh, one last uh, uh, shout out to, of course, to the, uh, the folks, to Manuela, to Cheryl, for helping us out today, to the FACE team, uh, to uh, Crystal Lofton, and to uh, Patricia Royale, who are uh, here, uh, have been listening all day to all of the presentations. Uh, thank you for coming out and supporting. Um, really appreciate uh, you all. Um, please have a great Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And for families, uh, feel free to reach out to us via the contact information we put in the chat. Uh, so that we can answer any remaining questions that you may have. Thank you and have a great day. Bye. And yes, and to the interpreters as well. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>